Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I want everybody who is interested in the company Ripple, the digital asset XRP, whether you're a holder or you're doing your research, this is a really good video for you. And we're going to start with a March earnings call with Intermex. Intermex is International Money Express. They're a company that is owned by Stella Point Capital in New York, and their CEO comes from Western Union. They spoke about the newly formed partnership with Ripple and using the on-demand liquidity, which is with the digital asset XRP, as their strategic priorities moving forward. You can see their first slide here, and it has Ripple there on the bottom. Have a listen to this one quick portion. Finally, we, con we constantly look for efficiencies in our business as evidenced by our strong operating leverage we've driven to date. I want to highlight our recently announced partnership with Ripple as a good example. We're working closely with them to leverage RippleNet platform to speed our connectivity to new partners, as well as using on-demand liquidity to drive capital efficiencies. So using on-demand liquidity, when you hear that, that means using the digital asset XRP to bridge those currencies when they're moving money across borders, and it is driving capital efficiencies. So this particular headline that has been seen in different variations in the last 25 hours probably has a lot of people scratching their heads and wondering, what is this? XRP is not an answer for Mexico, and this is coming from the RippleNet partner Intermex. Well, unless you really dive deep beyond the headline, it might leave you disappointed. How many times do we need to be reminded that media does this for the purpose of FUD, clickbait, or just poorly researched articles? And in this particular article, you can read, there is a quote buried down on the bottom here that says that Ripple will bring us more growth in newer markets. So let's explore that. What do you think he means by new newer markets? Well, if we go straight to the transcripts of that earnings call that took place on March 9th, it says here that we're looking at Ripple for a couple of other products mentioned in the press release. First, Ripple provides a hub and that will connect financial institutions together. It enables Intermex to onboard new payers faster as opposed to doing direct connections to each one. And this is more applicable, as they say, to their growth. They, meaning Ripple, are building their network into other corridors. And Intermex doesn't feel they need to replicate the partners they already have in Mexico, but rather they think Ripple will bring them more growth in newer markets. So the second thing, of course, they speak about in this earnings call is the, uh, the advantages of using the on-demand liquidity. All right, so if we look at that press release, I tried to find some more clues, and you can see that through the partnership, Intermex will be able to settle key currencies, all right? So that's, that's multiple currencies they're talking about, and match the timing of funding with its settlement requirements, reducing costs and providing transparency to their com customers. And there are plans for additional corridors with ODL. This is the Asian Pacific region, the Europe, Middle East, African region, and the Latin American. These are all new corridors that are in progress for 2020. I wanna kind of look at this Europe, Middle East, African corridor area because there is a couple of things going on that I want to tie together. First though, I'm gonna take you back to the Intermex website and you can see that they are highlighting their excitement to expand into the growing network of Africa. Ah, Africa. And I actually had a little chat with their online support and I uh, confirmed that the African 
uh, nations that they are currently providing that support is Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, and Kenya. And uh, it, it is confirmed here um, that yes, they do have an alliance with RippleNet, but no other details were disclosed to our personnel. So I, I was I was being very inquisitive and trying to get more information, but the person who was on the other side of this chat uh, didn't have enough information or wasn't going to share any more than um, than that. So not surprising, though, that we see this African corridor growing for them. Here is an ad that was being um, published about two and a half, three months ago. They were looking for a development manager uh, for Intermex Wire Transfer Company. And it was, of course, to grow that corridor. So what is interesting in the African corridor? Nigeria is very interesting. The remittances into, re into Nigeria is large, very large, 21 billion as of 2017. And that goes without saying that it has grown because this is an older um, this is an older number that is provided by the Pew's Research Center. And the largest amounts are coming from the US with 6 billion, UK 4 billion, and Italy 1 billion, respectively. But 21 billion for a corridor, it's, it's a major one. And I'd want to tie it in with this. This just happened three weeks ago. Osimo, they are another on-demand liquidity partner of Ripple. They are discussing going into Nigeria. Have a listen. This is very interesting. Or payment methods that we see in, say, Europe or America. How does this interact with Asimo going forward? That's a great question. Um, so what we've seen actually in the last year or so is a lot of VC money uh, and private equity money going into some of the emerging market payments infrastructure. So increasingly, I can get money into somewhere like the Philippines or Nigeria or Mexico or, or Latin America instantly, whereas it can take me one or two days to get into America. So actually, the technology that's been built in those countries is, is far superior to anything we've got here um, in either Europe or North America, where we're arguing about the standards. So it's been great for me. Um, and, and so if I can get money from Europe to say somewhere like Nigeria instantly was well, seven seconds. Um, and so once you offer that to customers, they love it. They keep coming back and they send more and more money and they send more money to more and more people. So, you know, it's been great that, that, that it's exactly right. That leapfrogging of technology that's happening in emerging markets has been really great for our business. Dish so Philippines, Mexico, Nigeria, Latin America, Europe to Nigeria in seven seconds. He knows. Why does he know? Because he's there. So I think Nigeria is also going to be one of the on-demand li on liquidity corridors that, that will hang many users on either end when the liquidity increases. That is why I don't think Intermex is going into Mexico. Mexico is very liquid, but they're into growth. They're into developing new corridors for their business. That is how they're going to please their shareholders. So I just am sure that Nigeria is going to be one of those corridors that they are focusing on, as does Osimo, who is already using on-demand liquidity uh, for the Philippines, we know for sure. Now, I just allow me to show an older clip of the CEO of Osmo, this is Michael Kent. And this is interesting. He's sitting next to Khalid Falahi, who is part of Western Union. His face is kind of funny because there is a big difference with uh, the two when it comes to moving money. You know, Western Union still has kiosks and agents. And Michael is talking about the advantages of when you can go a hundred percent digital. So just listen just briefly here. The fact that you're taking out the value chain of stores, kiosks, retail locations, and everything that comes with that. So the cash collection process, the armored cars, 
um, the occasional problems that you have with um, compliance. Um, you know, if you are, move this into a digital environment, um, it's it's much easier and it's much cheaper and it serves the customers better. So I think this, so the closest analogy would be um, Amazon for bookshops, potentially. Um, they reimagine that value chain from the bottom up and because it's always been data enabled and data driven, they're more, managing to be more and more successful. So everything is digital? Completely digital. Everything is digital, completely digital. I, I hope you could hear that. He basically is saying being digital, you can take out the stores, the kiosk, the retail locations, the cash collection process, the armored cars. It's easier, it's cheaper, and the um, services are better for the customer. And it, he's using it as a an example of Amazon. It's very interesting. So the moral to this story, and by the way, his red cap here is make money transfers great again yeah <laughs> that was funny so the moral of this story is banks are going to have to embrace distributed ledger technology even if it kills them according to this really great article that was on coindesk uh, just on march 18th and this is chuck fried and he specializes in fintech and this industry is something he's been in for 30 years. And banks are increasingly threatened, getting their customer base gobbled up. And the distributed ledger technology is going to transform the economy with or without them. So if banks want to secure their future, the opportunity is right in front of them now. It's a really great article. Okay, everybody, let's jump to a little fluff. So it's it's here, it's cherry blossom season. It, it is really earlier than usual. This is at uh, one of the many, many castles around Japan. There are about a hundred castles. Not all of them are full blown building still some are some are the ruins of what of where castles once stood uh, and some of them are are really preserved and kept in their entirety. If you go to Wikipedia, you can search on the 100 castles of Japan. And, and if you come and plan your trip around that, there are plenty to see. But this is also a typical scene at the castles because they indeed very often have a wonderful selection of cherry blossom trees. And I was just kind of seeing what I could find in the way of blossoms because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to go to any of the cherry blossom gatherings this year. And I did find a few cams. This is actually from Ueda Castle. Uh, it's a live cam. And uh, it's not what we would call Mankai full bloom yet, but it's getting very, very close. This is one of the gorgeous styles that are weeping uh, in their branch shapes. but. Uh, if you want to enjoy Japan from afar, you can do it through cams. This country is full of cams. This is a link that I will put in the description below. There are 233 live cams that you can see all the way from the top portion of Hokkaido. There's Tohoku down to Chubu. Here's the Kanto region, which is where Tokyo is. Uh, to Kansai. Kansai is maybe has a lot of great cams in the Kyoto area and Shikoku, Kyu, Kyushu, and there are eight in Okinawa. Anyway, I found that the ones that are near Mount Fuji in Lake Yamanakago, they are live. And then right now you have the wonderful ability to see what's called the Diamond Fuji, and this is when the uh, sunset and sunrise, depending on what side of the mountain you're on, lines up at dawn and dusk. And this is some of the pictures that are taken. This one was actually captured on the 19th of March. It's really special. And if you just search on Diamond Fuji, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of examples that people have 
been able to capture and some of them are just really beautiful and there is a live cam right now in Yamanakako and I was hoping maybe the timing of this video would be such that I could show you a Diamond Fuji on the live cam but I'm too early so I think that when you are searching for that you're going to have a good time looking through those photographs okay everybody do take care sayonara for now bye bye